using order dict in Python. Sometimes you need a Python dictionary that remembers the order of its items. In the past, you only had one tool for solving this specific problem, Python's order dict. It's a dictionary subclass specifically designed to remember the order of items, which is defined by the insertion order of keys. But this changed in Python 3.6. The built-in dictionary class now keeps its items ordered as well. Because of that, many in the Python community now wonder if order dict is still useful. A closer look at the class will uncover that it still provides valuable features. In this course, you'll learn how to create and use order dict objects in your code, identify the differences between order dict and dict, and understand the pros and cons of using order dict versus dict. With this knowledge, you'll be able to choose the dictionary class that best fits your needs when you want to preserve the order of items. By the end of the course, you'll see an example of implementing a dictionary-based queue using order dict, which would be more challenging if you used a regular dictionary. Any code that you see running in the REPL will be using the bPython interpreter. This is a replacement Python interpreter that offers a number of enhancements, including code highlighting and suggestions, but any code you see running on screen will work in the Python REPL, which is typically accessed by typing Python or Python 3 at your terminal or command line prompt. So now you know what's going to be covered, let's get started. Choosing between order dict and dict. For years, Python dictionaries were unordered data structures. Python developers were used to this fact, and they relied on lists or other sequences when they needed to keep their data in order. With time, developers found a need for a new type of dictionary, one that would keep the items ordered. Back in 2008, PEP372 introduced the idea of adding a new dictionary class to collections. Its main goal was to remember the order of items as defined by the order in which the keys were inserted. That was the origin of ordered dict. Core Python developers wanted to fill in the gap and provide a dictionary that could preserve the order of inserted keys. That, in turn, allowed for a more straightforward implementation of specific algorithms that rely on this property. Order dict was added to the standard library in Python 3.1. Its API is essentially the same as dict. However, order dict iterates over keys and values in the same order that the keys were inserted. If a new entry overwrites an existing entry, then the order of items is left unchanged. If an entry is deleted and reinserted, then it will be moved to the end of the dictionary. Python 3.6 introduced a new implementation of dictionaries. This represents a big win in terms of memory usage and iteration efficiency. Additionally, the new implementation provides a new and somewhat unexpected feature. Dictionary objects now keep their items in the same order they were introduced. Initially, this feature was considered an implementation detail and the documentation advised against relying on it. In Python 3.7, the items ordered feature of dict objects was declared an official part of the Python language specification. So, from that point on, developers could rely on dict if they needed a dictionary that keeps its items ordered. At this point, a question arises. Is order dict still needed after this new implementation? The answer depends on your specific use case and also how explicit you want to be in your code. Some features of order dict still make it valuable and different from a regular dict. First, intent signaling. If you use order dict over dict, then your code makes it clear that the order of items in the dictionary is important. You're clearly communicating that your code needs or relies on the order of items in the underlying dictionary. Control over the order of items. If you need to rearrange or reorder the items in a dictionary, then you can use move to end and the enhanced variation of pop item. Equality test behavior. If your code compares dictionaries for equality and the order of items is important in that comparison, then order dict is the right choice. There's at least one more reason to continue using order dict in your code, backwards compatibility. Relying on regular dictionaries to preserve the order of items will break your code in environments that run versions of Python older than 3.6. It's difficult to say if dict will ever fully replace order dict. At the moment, order dict still offers interesting and valuable features that you might want to consider when selecting a tool for a given job.
In the next section of the course, you'll get started by using Order Dict. Getting started with Order Dict. Python's Order Dict is a dictionary subclass that preserves the order in which key value pairs, commonly known as items, are inserted into the dictionary. When you iterate over an Order Dict object, items are traversed in the original order. When you update the value of an existing key, then the order remains unchanged. If you remove an item and reinsert it, then the item is being added at the end of the dictionary. Being a dictionary subclass means that it inherits all the methods a regular dictionary provides. Order Dict also has additional features that you'll learn about in this course. In this section, you'll learn the basics of creating and using Order Dict objects in your code. Unlike standard dictionaries, Order Dict isn't a built-in type, so the first step to create an Order Dict object is to import the class from collections. There are several ways to create Order Dictionaries, and most of them are identical to how you create a regular dictionary object. For example, you can create an empty ordered dictionary by instantiating the class without arguments. First, you import ordered dict from collections. Then you create an empty ordered dictionary by instantiating ordered dict without providing arguments to the constructor. You can add key value pairs to the dictionary by providing a key in square brackets and assigning a value to that key. When you reference numbers, you get an iterable of key value pairs that holds items in the same order they were inserted into the dictionary. You can also pass an iterable of items as an argument to the constructor of order dict. When you use a sequence, such as a list or tuple, the order of the items in the resulting ordered dictionary matches the original order of items in the input sequence. If you use a set, then the final order of items is unknown until the order dict is created. If you use a regular dictionary as an initializer to an ordered dict object and you're on Python 3.6 or beyond, then you get the behavior seen on screen. The order of items in the order dict objects matches the order in the original dictionary. On the other hand, if you're using a version of Python lower than 3.6, then the order of items is unknown. Since dictionaries in Python 3.5 don't remember the order of their items, you don't know the order in the resulting order dictionary until the object is created. From this point on, the order is maintained. You can also create an order dictionary by passing keyword arguments to the class constructor. Since Python 3.6, functions retain the order of keyword arguments passed in a call. So the order of the items in the order dict matches the order in which you pass the keyword arguments to the constructor. In earlier Python versions, that order is unknown. Finally, Order dict also provides the from keys method, which creates a new dictionary from an iterable of keys and sets all its values to a common value. Here, you create an ordered dictionary using a list of keys as a starting point. The second argument to from keys provides a single value, zero, to all the items in the dictionary. Since order dict is a mutable data structure, you can perform mutating operations on its instances. You can insert new items, update and remove existing items, and so on. If you insert a new item into an existing order dictionary, then the item is added to the end of the dictionary. The newly added item 4 is placed at the end of the underlying dictionary, 
so the order of the existing items remains unaffected and the dictionary keeps the insertion order. If you delete an item from an existing order dictionary and insert that same item again, then the new instance of the item is placed at the end of the dictionary. If you remove the one item and insert a new instance of the same item, then the new item is added to the end of the underlying dictionary. If you reassign or update the value of an existing key value pair in an ordered dictionary object, then the key maintains its position but gets a new value. If you update the value of a given key in an ordered dictionary, then the key isn't moved but assigned the new value in place. In the same way, if you use update to modify the value of an existing key value pair, then the dictionary remembers the position of the key and assigns the updated value to it. In the next section of the course, you'll deepen your knowledge of ordered dicts by looking at iteration. Iterating over an ordered dict. Just as with regular dictionaries, you can iterate through an ordered dict object using several tools and techniques. You can iterate over the keys directly, or you can use dictionary methods such as items, keys, and values. This loop iterates over the keys of numbers directly. This loop iterates over items, this loop iterates over keys, and this loop iterates over values. Another important feature that Order Dict has provided since Python 3.5 is that items, keys, and values support reverse iteration using reversed. This feature was added to regular dictionaries in Python 3.8. So if your code uses it, then your backwards compatibility is much more restricted with normal dictionaries. You can use reversed with the items, keys, and values of an ordered dict object. Regular dictionaries also support reverse iteration. However, if you try to use reversed with a regular dictionary object in a Python version lower than 3.8, then you get a type error. If you need to iterate over the items in a dictionary in reverse order, then ordered dict is a good ally. Using a regular dictionary dramatically reduces your backwards compatibility because reverse iteration wasn't added to regular dictionaries until Python 3.8. In the next section of the course, you'll take a look at some of the unique features of ordered dict. Exploring unique features of ordered dict. Since Python 3.6, regular dictionaries have kept their items in the same order that they were inserted into the underlying dictionary. This limits the usefulness of order dict as you've seen so far. However, order dict provides some unique features that you can't find in a regular dictionary. With an ordered dictionary, you have access to these extra and enhanced methods. Move to end allows you to move an existing item either to the end or the beginning of a dictionary. Pop item is an enhanced variation of its dictionary counterpart that allows you to remove and return an item from either the end or the beginning of the underlying ordered dictionary. 
Order Dict and Dict also behave differently when they're tested for equality. Specifically, when you compare ordered dictionaries, the order of items matters. That's not the case with regular dictionaries. Finally, Order Dict provides an attribute called Dunder Dict that you can't find in a regular dictionary instance. This attribute allows you to add custom writable attributes to an existing ordered dictionary. One of the most useful unique features of Order Dict is that it has an extra method called Move to End. This method allows you to move existing items to either the end or the beginning of the underlying dictionary, so it's a great tool for reordering. When you use Move to End, you can supply two arguments. Key holds the key that identifies the item that you want to move. If key doesn't exist, then you get a key error. Last holds a Boolean value that defines to which end of the dictionary you want to move the item. It defaults to true, which means the item will be moved to the end or right side of the dictionary. False means the item will be moved to the front or left side of the dictionary. On screen is an example of how to use move to end with a key argument and relying on the default value of last. When you call move to end with a key as an argument, you move the key value pair at hand to the end of the dictionary. That's why one is now in the last position. Note that the rest of the items remain in the original order. If you pass false to last, then you're moving the item to the beginning. Here, you move one back to the beginning of the dictionary. This provides an interesting and powerful feature. For example, with move to end, you can sort an ordered dictionary by keys. Here, you first create an ordered dictionary, letters. The for loop iterates over the sorted keys and moves every item to the end of the dictionary. When the loop finishes, the ordered dictionary has its items sorted by keys. Sorting the dictionary by values would be an interesting exercise, so let's take a look at one way you could achieve this. Here a lambda expression is used to provide the key, giving access to the value of each item. As you can see, the dictionary is now ordered by the value of the key. If you want to learn more about Lambda expressions, check out this real Python course, which covers them in detail. Another interesting feature of Order Dict is its enhanced version of Pop Item. By default, Pop Item removes and returns an item in last in, first out order. In other words, it removes items from the right end of the ordered dictionary. Here you remove all the items from numbers using pop item. Every call to this method removes a single item from the end of the underlying dictionary. If you call pop item on an empty dictionary, then you get a key error. Up to this point, Pop item behaves the same as in regular dictionaries. In order dict, however, pop item also accepts a Boolean argument called last, which defaults to true. If you set last to false, then pop item removes the items in first in, first out order. In other words, it removes items from the beginning of the dictionary. Once again, the last call to pop item raises a key error because the underlying dictionary is already empty. In the next section of the course, you'll deepen your knowledge of order dicts by looking at how to test for equality between dictionaries.